Welcome to part 9. I need to make one quick change to the authorization object that we created in part 8. And um, I realized when testing this that we actually have a minor issue that I want to fix ahead of time. So I know I talked earlier about using um, this database so that all functions within this particular object could access the database. And while that may be a good idea, it did occur to me that there's some functions like check login status and log out that don't need access to the database. And anytime we create this object, it is assumed that there is a connection to the database and so it may be used. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to copy the global database line. I'm going to place it within validate login. And I'm going to remove this from the constructor. So now we only need to access the database in the validate login function. And if we add functions to this object, we, you know, if we add functions that need access to the database, we would also need to include the global database so we have access. And uh, last changes, we can remove this database so we access the database directly. And we can remove the private database because we don't need to use that anymore. Okay, so I'm going to save this and let's move on to our controllers. I think I'm going to start off with login.php and we need to adjust this quite a bit because obviously some of this code is now within our initialization include. So let's start out with an include. Um, two includes actually. So we need to include our database. And we need to include our initialization PHP file. Um, because the login.php file accesses the database, that's why we need to include this. So um, now we need to go ahead and do a standard if is set and check if the form has been submitted. So like previous tutorials, I'm going to use if is set post submit to check for form submission. And if the form has been submitted, we're going to get the data. Um, but I'm going to skip down below else. We're going to use our template object. Actually, I can just copy this. And we're going to load the login view. So let me go ahead and delete all of this stuff. Um, yeah. So if we if the form has been submitted, we're going to do PHP processing. Otherwise, we're just going to load the view. So let me go ahead and save this. Um, let's preview and make sure everything's working as it should. And invalid argument supplied for four each. Let me take a look at this briefly. Oh, that's what we did. Um, I apologize. Let's go back to our login. And I'm going to remove what I just deleted. We need to set the alert types in our initialization file. OK, so now we can delete this. Save this file. Go back to init.php. And after we create our template object, let's also set the alert types. So there we go. So I'm going to go back to login. Now let's preview and everything's working as it should. OK, so let's um, add to the section You know what happens when the form is submitted. So we do want to process the form. So the first step is to get the data. So I'm going to use template set data. And I'm going to pull from the form. I'm going to set up input user. And I'm going to get the username, or you know, from the post data in this case, but get 
the value from the form. And similarly, uh, let me just copy this line instead. Instead of input user, it's going to be input pass and password. So if you remember from our template object, this is going to set the data within the template object and it assigns this value to the input user variable or in the template object the array that holds this particular key and um, keep in mind also that within the template if we go back there for a second we do use the HTML entities function so we are checking to make sure the input is valid okay so we have gotten the data next step is to validate the data and we're going to check first if um, either the username and password are empty so if and I could use template get data for this but for simplicity's sake since the code is a bit shorter I'm just going to grab the post data so if the username is blank or the password is blank We want to show an error message. And that's pretty straightforward. So we're going to check um, first is the username blank? And if so, we're going to use template set data. And we're going to create a error underscore user with the value of required field. And then we're going to do the same check except with the password. And the error pass. So these two lines will set the data within our template and if either of these are blank, if we go back to our view for a minute, they will appear here within the error div. So next thing that we want to do is we want to show an alert indicating there has been an error. So we do that with template set alert. We're going to ask them to uh, please fill in all required fields and this will be an error message. And finally, let's load our login view. Okay, so this is what happens if one of the fields is blank. Now what happens if both fields are filled in but the form data is invalid, it doesn't match against the database. So um, instead of an else here, we're going to do an else if. So if this is fine, it'll drop down to the else if. And now we're going to check the off object. And we're going to use the validate login function. And we're going to provide it with the template data. Um, so we're going to use template get data and the get data for the input pass so if the validate login function returns false we know that it's an invalid login. 
And uh, just to be clear, the reason why I'm using template get data here rather than using post is I know this data has been um, sanitized. It's gone through the, if we go back to it one second, it's gone through the HTML entities function. So we know it should be safe to uh, work with. Up here, we're just check, checking to make sure it exists, if there's some value there, so we don't need to worry about sanitizing the data. So um, basically, if this returns false, a couple minor things, um, basically we're just going to copy these two lines, paste them in, and instead of asking them to fill out all required fields, I'm going to say invalid uh, username or password. And finally, else, so if this is fine and the validate login returns true, which means they are a valid user, we do want to log them in. So I'm going to paste this one more time. Um, instead of an error message, it's going to be a success message. And we're going to do welcome. I'll do an i tag for italics. And we're going to pass in template get data. So we want to say, you know, welcome the username. So input um, user. So, and the set alert function defaults to the success message, so we don't have to include error or warning. And then this time, instead of um, loading, we're actually going to redirect. And we're going to redirect to members.php. And the last thing I just noticed, you may have even caught this, you'd think I'd learn, um, but we need to use two equals here and two equals here. Unfortunately those are one of the errors that it's hard to catch because it doesn't actually show you an error message. Um, but I believe that's it so I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna preview it and wrap up this course in the next video.